Equippers, it's me again, Mr. Jiggs, your grade 5 6 pastor here at Cerise Church. Welcome to Equip. Equip is a place where we learn more about God and help you apply those in your daily walk with Jesus. Last week with Mr. Joss, you have learned that living by God's standard is an, is, a, is an attainable goal. In fact, He would not require you to walk in holiness if it were not within your ability to do so. When you develop a relationship with God and live according to His standards, you will become stronger and more successful in your faith journey. Now, as we conclude our series study about purity, we will talk about pursuing God's standard in every area of our lives. We will talk about how to live a life that is according to the standard of the Bible. I am sure that you are all excited. So let's jump right in and I'll see you all afterward. You can be a winner at the skills of life. Life skills! I know what you're thinking. What's that smell? Oh, excuse me. I know what you're thinking. What's that smell? <laughs> All this could have been avoided if I just would have wore deodorant. That's what we're gonna learn today. First, we'll need easy access to our armpits. Now, we need deodorant. There it is. You take off the cap. Neck, roll it up. Then, you apply. Not too much, it'll burn. Lifty, righty. You're done. Smells fresh as a daisy. Benefits of deodorant are the following. Oh, dryness, odor protection, people not running away from you. And that is how to apply deodorant. Important warning that I have learned from personal use and experience is to not eat this as delicious as it might look. We learned something new today, we learned something new. We learned something new today, we learned how to put on deodorant. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees, O oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things, O oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O oh, Spirit, come make us humble. Let us not lift our souls to another. 
You've probably heard the word holy before, or at least sang it in a church song once or twice. And for most people, this idea is really just connected to being a morally good person. So God is holy because he's morally perfect. Yeah, that is part of it. But in the Bible, the idea of holiness is even bigger and more rich. What it's really describing is how God is the creative force behind the whole universe. He's the one and only being with the power to make a world full of such beauty and life. And so all these abilities, they make God utterly unique, which is the meaning of the word holy. So a helpful way to think about God's holiness is by using the sun as a metaphor. The sun is unique, at least within our solar system, and it's really powerful. It's the source of all this beautiful life on our planet. And so you could say that the sun is holy. And you can actually take this metaphor even further in that the whole area around the sun is also holy. Yeah, because the closer you get to the sun, the more intense it gets. Yeah, exactly. So that very power and goodness that generates all this life is also dangerous. I mean, the sun, if you get too close, will annihilate you. And in the same way, there's this paradox at the heart of God's own holiness, because if you're impure, his presence is dangerous to you. And not because it's bad, but because it's so good. And so the first time we see this paradox of God's holiness, it's in the story of Moses and the burning bush. So God tells Moses to take off his sandals because he's standing on holy ground. And Moses covers his face in fear, and God says, hey, don't come any closer. It's intense. It's actually that intensity of God's holiness that's explored even more in the stories about Israel's temple, which was the main place where God's holy presence was located. And at the center of the temple was this room called the most holy place, this the hot spot of God's presence. And whether you're an Israelite living in the land around the temple or a priest working right in the temple, you're in proximity to God's holy presence, which is dangerous. Yeah, this is a problem. So how's it supposed to work? Well, in the Bible, the solution is that you need to become pure. So like being morally pure. Yeah, and that's easy enough to understand. But the Bible spends a lot of time talking about another kind of purity, being ritually pure, which is a state where you separate yourself from anything related to death, like touching things like diseased skin or dead bodies or even certain bodily fluids. All these make you impure. And becoming ritually impure isn't necessarily sinful. What's wrong is waltzing into God's presence when you're in an impure state. And so that's why God gave the Israelites very clear instructions for knowing when they were impure, steps to become pure, so that they could go into the temple again. So that's what the book of Leviticus is about. Right. But it doesn't stop there. This idea keeps developing. So later in the scriptures, we find this really interesting story by a prophet named Isaiah. And he has this crazy vision where he's in the temple and he's right in God's presence. He's totally terrified. Yeah, he knows the rules. He shouldn't even be in there. And he's worried about being destroyed. And then this crazy creature called a seraphim. Yeah, that is a crazy creature. (laughs) Totally. So it flies over with a hot coal, and then it sears Isaiah's lips with the coal and says something really weird. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. So this burning coal somehow makes Isaiah pure. Yeah, it's remarkable because normally if you touch something impure, it transfers its impurity to you. But now here's this new idea where you have this coal, this very holy and pure object, and it touches Isaiah and it transfers its purity to him. Isaiah is not destroyed by God's holiness. He's transformed by it. I mean, the implications of this are just huge. But there's one more development this time from another prophet, Ezekiel. And he has this vision where he's standing at the temple and he sees water trickling out from it. And then that water turns into a stream and then it grows into a deep river that starts flowing through the desert, leaving this trail of green trees behind it. And then it flows into the Dead Sea, making everything fresh and alive. So instead of becoming pure first and then going into the temple, here God's holiness comes out from the temple, making things pure and bringing them to life. What does it all mean? So we don't know until we meet this man, Jesus. And he claims that he's fulfilling all of these ancient visions, but in surprising new ways. So Jesus, he went around touching people who are impure, people with skin diseases, a a woman with chronic bleeding or dead people. And when he touches them, their impurity should transfer over to Jesus. 
but instead Jesus' purity transfers to them and actually heals their bodies. Jesus is like that holy coal in Isaiah's vision. Right. And Jesus claimed that he was the human embodiment of God's own holiness and that he and his followers were now God's temple so that through them, God's holy presence would go out into the world and bring life and healing and hope. And so this is why Jesus described his followers as having streams of living water flowing out of them. So this is our part of the story where we find ourselves now. but. Where's this all heading? So the last pages of the Bible end with a final vision about God's holiness. And this time it's by a guy named John. And in his vision, we see the whole world made completely new. The entire earth has become God's temple. And Ezekiel's river is there flowing out of God's presence, immersing all of creation, removing all impurity and bringing everything back to life. I know that many of you like to play games like I do. It's a lot of fun to get together with family and friends, and there are all sorts of games we can play too. Card games, board games, activity games. Every game though has rules that we must understand and follow before we can actually play. The rules make the game enjoyable and fair, so we can all have fun. The rules are usually written on paper and included in the game's packaging. We know that there are rules also that we are supposed to follow in life. Where do you think we can find those rules? Well, 
They were all given to us by God, and He put them in the Bible for us to read and remember. Mark chapter 12, verse 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Think about it. If you all could just, you know, love God with our whole being and love all our neighbors like we love ourselves, I guess the world would be a much different place. Each one of us can love and honor God by being kind to everyone. If we did those two rules, the other ones would be followed as well. Think about Jesus' answer this coming week and try to love Him, our friends, and ourselves. Maybe some of you are here today and have doubts about being followers of Jesus. Well, we can deal with that situation right now. To become follower of Jesus is as simple, as easy, and as easy as A, B, C. A, admit what you have done wrong and ask forgiveness. B, believe that Jesus died on the the cross and rose again as payment for your sins. C, confess and choose. Confess and choose to allow God to be in charge of your life. Pray this prayer with me if you want to be followers of Jesus. Dear Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner and I sin against you and I seek forgiveness from you. I believe that you died on the cross so that I may be free from all my sin. I accept you now as my Lord and my Savior. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you pray that prayer, guys, Welcome to the family of God. If you have questions or you have any, you know, concerning thoughts about everything, you can ask your parents or you can email Mr. Jakes. Also, if you don't have a Bible and you need one, I got a brand new one for you. Let me know and I'll send it across to you, okay? That's it for now, guys. Summer is coming. Therefore, we will start a new series called Roots. I am super thrilled to see all of you again as we continue our adventure this summer here at the crib. Bye.